And now we're going to hear from Fulvio Conti, the Chief Executive of NL. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid I'm not going to answer that question. That will be a collective answer, hopefully. Uh, uh, but I'll try to do my best to depict what we need in Europe in these days. And guess what? We need not a new Europe. We need to go back to the old Europe. We need to uh, not to change governance, but rather to use the existing one more effectively. I'm referring to specifically to the Treaty of Lisbon, which has been ratified in December 2009, and it's there. Why should not we use it? Why should not we take advantage of this? For true European, as I think I am, I cannot wait until it is fully implemented. I cannot wait until we will need not anymore the consensus of 28 countries or on every step forward. So more than a new governance, uh, we need a stronger European global governance uh, today, whose roots lie within the original Schumann's declaration, written 50 years ago, uh, de depicting the John Monet's vision. Well, uh, what we need is going back, going back to the initial concept of Europe, to lean forward and make improvements to the existing one, but not dramatically alter the uh, uh, father's uh, ideas. Since the inception of the euro, it was evident that we were needing uh, what we now call the fiscal compact. That did not come and it's not here yet. On the contrary, we have had a tight monetary control and loose public deficit monitoring, which has allowed most countries to do basically what they wanted. The first issue to correct then is what I call the liquidity trap in the market, mainly affecting small and medium enterprises, uh, which are the backbone of Europe economy. Over the years, the European Central Bank mission has been to tighten inflation, restraining monetary policy. The end result has been higher than needed interest rates, higher value of the euros, and the final result is this policy have discouraged industrial development, uh, resulted in lower productivity, higher public spending, and all in all, encourage banks to go around with uh, sophisticated derivatives to make a profit. The subsequent financial crisis undermining the banking system is resulting in continued low liquidity for the industry, low risk capital available, and higher debt needed for ongoing investments. In the electricity sector, which I do represent, basically, we need to refinance 50 billion euros per year in the next four years. And of course, this is most of, uh, most of all one third of the overall indebtedness of the corporation. We have now seen recently, uh, thanks to uh, the new uh, president of ECB, an injection of liquidity into the banking sector. This has prompted uh, interest rates to go down, but this is not yet enough. The liquidity has remained within the banking system to restore capital instead of being flown back to the real economy where it's needed. Therefore, we need more than just a single currency. We need a fiscal union. We need a common financial instruments such as eurobonds. We need one financial regulators. One financial regulator. What we need is the BCE to act as a true, real, and only central bank in Europe. But this is not the only thing we have to come over. There is another issue to tackle in Europe, and it is the complex bureaucratic machine that European Union looks today. Far remote from being uh, a unitary focused body that we would need very much in these days. This is not a question of proficiency. In Europe, we have amongst the best politicians, the best professional technicians, uh, that is rather a question of organization. Uh, in Europe, we go for committality, committology. Layers of committees trying to uh, run by thousands of employees, trying to figure it out uh, ways to uh, promote piece of legislation without any commission, any committed vision. 
there is a need to readjust also the interaction and responsibility among the Troika, the Parliament, the Commission, and the Council. Indeed, what we see now is the pursuing of keeping 28 different countries satisfied with their own interests rather than strengthening policies, fiscal unity and solidarity, and tougher controls. The end result of this is that European Union, through more directives, papers, instructions, or other different pieces of legislation, which will go to infinite details, and that will be hardly implemented by member states. I remain a convinced supporter of Europe. Uh, basic principles and ideas I've been living with since my, my um, date of birth. But we need a thorough reshaping of the way the core engine of the Union operates. Coordination and integration are two key pillars of the future of Europe, of European governance. A simplification of the current legislative burden is also a must. We need to have a leaner and more flexible European architecture where the country's interests will be replaced by a common, integrated, and forward-looking European vision, basically oriented to growth. Take my industry, energy, uh, as an example. Being uh, annual, a global group with uh, operations in 40 different countries, nine of which are member states in Europe, Brussels is a regular stopover for me. Well, in Brussels, I found four different commissioners that have a say on energy matters. All of them legitimately convinced they contribute to the progress in the industry. Now, pending today, we have 26 legislation initiatives in progress, 74 directives and regulation in force. And frequently, the results are contradicting legislation, partially transposed or not transposed directives, generating deep differences on markets across the Union. Our industry needs sound, stable, coherent, and long-term oriented policies. We're an industry with long lead times, have intense capital investments required. We need three trillion, three trillion, three thousand billion uh, of investments up to 2030 in Europe, just in our industry. But to deploy these huge investments, to deploy this huge amount of money. We need stable regulation, encouraging regulation, both a European level and a national level. Although the European Commission uh, reacted to our needs with the 2050 energy roadmap, a competitive and decarbonized energy system in 2050 will be only required if we enact some real actions. Let me say, first of all, harmonization of regulation. It remains a key issue. We have 28 different regulations in place, uh, and the directives don't help in streaming it up into one. Uh, an efficient single market, we still don't see this uh, occurring. Integration on networks, strong, reliable, hub to state of the art technology of grids to take advantage of the uh, very uh, cost-efficient uh, uh, energy sources. And cost-effectiveness, which is to say that we need to have in all countries the vast access to the, uh, any technology to transform kilocalories into kilowatt hours or to use the market power to regulate the inflows of primary energy, such as gas from Eastern Europe or from uh, Persian Gulf. And definitely we need uh, innovation. We need a lot of investments in innovation, and Europe is not doing enough on this. So if we want to achieve all of this, and being a decarbonized, no CO2 economy in 2050, uh, we need uh, a support on the European trading scheme. Uh, now, I don't want to abuse ab about your time, but I understand that Europe is thinking about revising the system of this different legislation to, to make it possible into a more a, a simpler and more efficient uh, instruction to, to the single market. I would appreciate uh, European uh, commissioners and, uh, and council to think very much about leveling off those pieces of legislation, checking the, their coherence, and possibly giving us fewer but more tougher 
uh, regulations available. Uh, I think this is a bold pace uh, uh, ahead in constructing what I believe is important for all of us, a Europe where all citizens can live together in peace and build their future. Thank you very much.